Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Rough Draft of Randomness podcast. I am your host, the D-Man. And we are on our fifth episode as we journey through between 300 to 400 mystery comic books from DC, from Marvel, from independent labels. So, we've already journeyed through a handful. Well, this is our fifth episode, so four episodes down, we've journeyed through 12 whole comics of 300 to 400. Stick with me, folks. There's going to be a lot of videos. Hey, content! Like and subscribe for future videos. I'm going to try to put these out about once a week. We'll see how often I actually record. But I'm trying to get a few of these in the can right now. So, today, these ones I just read are recorded in episode 4 earlier. Behind the curtain, check it out. This is how I do it. Nobody cares how you do it. Get to the comic books. That's what this content's all about. Those comics. Look, just because I added a 300 foil facsimile Amazing Spider-Man in the background doesn't mean Venom, you can chime in every single time that you like. Oh, but I didn't need the comic to feel welcome. I was already part of this podcast from day one. True. So, today on the docket, <laughs> we got Justice League 52. We got New Avengers 12. And we got Hercules, number one of five of this run from this series. And we got some fun issues that I'm going to show off as to my extra randomness. Because if you've watched any of the previous episodes, you know that I don't just talk about the three random mystery comics. I usually throw in a little bit of tidbit about something else. Episode four, we talked about my Eminem covers that I got from Orbit Comics, Jordan Noir, Jan Fortress, all that jazz. Check it out at the One D Man on YouTube, at the One D Man on Instagram. Follow me, like me. Subscribe to me. I mean, if you want. If not, just enjoy the content and the randomness. So, we're going to start off in the order of which I read them, because that's apparently the way that I've been doing this, and it seems to be a decent pattern. So, we got Hercules, number one of five. This is Hercules, the Thracian Wars. And it features Hercules with his lion mane. Adorned on the cover. And this is from Radical Comics. Circa 2008, I believe. Is what the copyright of. Yes, 2008. I am right. My short term memory does work. Hey! Ah, uh, randomness. So this one was right away very gruesome, uh, depicting. Uh, fair warning, I'm going to show a gruesome picture. So like the YouTube channel, if you want to see something gruesome, but it's a crow pecking out an eyeball and also pecking out the intestines. And it talks about how brutal and savage the crows are. All right, I'll get that off the screen. I hope they got in the frame because I totally covered my face and I'm not sure exactly if it got into the picture. But hey, if it didn't, I'll make a bonus content, and I'll make sure I feature it nice and gruesomely so you all savages can see it. But basically, it's talking about uh, Hercules and his crew of Greeks are going to uh, Theron uh, to basically work for the king. And so they arrive. So first, two of his lackeys kind of arrive. So, Hercules, one of his Hercules cousins, I believe. And they basically show up first. And this king's basically give him a whole bunch of grief. And basically a whole bunch of ish. Being like, oh, I thought you guys would be bigger. I was expecting something bigger. This is all you guys got. This is the warriors that's going to train us. And then finally, Hercules shows up after basically all the junkards in the bar have been talking their ish. 
about Hercules and saying how, oh, I heard he was this or he was that. I heard he likes to sleep with boys and stuff like that. In the comic, not making that part up. So basically, they're talking all sorts of trash on Hercules. And so Hercules shows up. He tries to calm the situation down. He's like, hey, look, we're here doing a job. Let us train our young men. What do you guys know about being warriors? The drunkards start spouting off again. Finally, Hercules has enough. He just snaps. He starts stabbing dudes. So then it's Hercules and his crew against all the barbarians and stuff like that. And thus starts the Thracian War. And then they basically killed everybody, like 100 freaking people. Hercules and his crew killed all these Thracian warriors in the bar. Brutal. And then they turn to leave, and there's a huge army waiting for them. And they go, oh, that's the real king. The guy in the bar was an imposter. And then, TBC to be continued. Our favorite words. No, but actually it was really cool. Really enjoyable story. It was nice. It was brutal. It had all the bloodshed you wanted. It had some cool, actually, depiction of Hercules' uh, 12 trials, where he, you know, killed the lion and got the three-headed hound from Hades. It was cool. Uh, there was a lot of names in there that I am not going to attempt to stay, say or remember because they were those Greek weird names that were like, I, I can't, I'm not, I got nothing. Hercules. That's my example. They were like Hercules. Now let's see if I can pull a page that actually has some names listed. Oh yeah. And one of Hercules' crew was a woman. And of course all the drunk was like, huh, a woman can't be a, bot, a warrior. How hilarious. You know, that kind of drunk stuff. Uh, I can't find a page with any names on it. I'm trying to flip quick. I totally flipped too fast. Uh, his mother, Alchemini. That's another one. Let's see, there's some fun ones. Hera, goddess. I mean, Zeus, obviously, that's an easy one. I'm trying to find the hard ones, and I find Iolos, son of Ephesiles, and nephew of Hercules, with the highborn Minius. Yeah, I'm going to remember that and report it back to you guys. Not. Sometimes it's lowbrow humor around here, okay? So that was Hercules. Sometimes. More like every time. All right, get it. Thirteen Wars, Radical Comics. It's pretty legit. I actually wouldn't mind finding the rest of that saga to read it. So, uh, I'm rocking the cap shirt today because one of the stories that I read featured Captain America. It was the New Avengers. New Avengers! So this one was circa... Oh gosh, I had it before. 2011! So this features new Avengers. So it's a new cast of characters, not just necessarily our usual standard Avengers. We got Luke Cage, Miss Marvel, Thing, Iron Fist, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Doctor Strange, Mockingbird, Jesse, Jessica Jones, blah, blah, blah. Jessica Jones, Victoria Hand. I repeat it like I'm going to edit. I ain't going to edit. You're just going to hear me say Jessica Jones twice. Now three times. And Squirrel Girl. And apparently there's multiple timelines going on right now. There's the present. Where basically uh, the commander, Avengers commander, Steve Rogers, gave the members I just listed, carte blanche, here's the key to Avengers Mansion. Take care of stuff that you think needs to be taken care of. Handle the way you would handle it. You guys are Avengers now. Boom. Not sure where Steve Rogers is. He's out in this. There's a version of a Captain America in this. But that's in the past. In like 1959. Where Nick Fury is. With a whole band of characters. Which I don't think he's calling the Avengers. But I mean. It's technically an Avengers initiative there. But they got Sabretooth. Uh, Namora, an Atlantean princess, 
uh, Craven the Hunter, Bloodstone, uh, a mythical uh, enhanced monster hunter, so a Silver Sable, some other characters that I'm not sure you're familiar with, but basically a whole crew of some badasses that are a little bit bad. So kind of, I'm not going to say Suicide Squad, but it's got a little bit of that essence with the fact that, I mean, you know, got Craven the Hunter, you got Sabretooth on the team. You know, it's a little bit of questionable characters. So it starts off, one of them basically was wounded in battle. And Hawkeye's on the outside of the operating room. Like, I want this shit get gotten now. Uh, it was, oh gosh, Sylvia. I want to say Sylvia's name. Yeah. Oh, Superia. Superia is the villainess that basically Hawkeye wants to make sure gets got. And then we see in the next page, like in page two or three, we see a Captain America, but he's working with Hydra. So basically it says in that preface page that in 1959, Nick Fury and his crew stumble upon Captain America inside of a Hydra base working with the Red Skull. But this is after when Captain America should have died in the past, so it's not really Captain America. It's like his version of the Super Soldier. So basically Red Skull is continuing his plan about trying to build his own Super Soldiers and all that jazz. And this is one of his products. And so uh, the Avengers initiative of the 1959 crew, Sabretooth and all of them, attack, you know, take on this Captain America who keeps going, I know you, a couple times. But they kind of ignore him. They just keep battling against him until they inevitably defeat him. And then it cuts back to the future or the present time where they're trying to basically interview this one person they captured. Uh, I forget what it was for. But basically she didn't want to talk and then Wolverine pops in. And he's like, you're going to tell us what you know. Because they're trying to find Superior. Uh, and then it cuts back to Red Skull, and basically Doctor Strange, oh, Doctor Strange I think was part of the crew? No, it's not. Doctor Strange is part of the newer crew, sorry. It got mixed up because, like I said, it was a little random. It went forward and back, forward and back, it's one of those things where it flipped between timelines, which sometimes I appreciate, but sometimes in some storytelling it gets a little confusing, it's a little jumbled, especially when some of the people look similar. Like that dude right there with his goatee looks similar to Doctor Strange, but he's not Doctor Strange. He's one of the characters from the 1959 Avengers crew. Anyway, random. So, they basically take off, they're trying to capture Red Skull, who's shooting back at them. They take down some of his uh, minions, and they actually inevitably catch Red Skull. Uh, Sabretooth basically went full beast mode on him, uh, ran through bullets to get almost all the way up to capturing Red Skull. He was right there, and then one of the other members shot, tried to shoot Red Skull. Unfortunately, boom, shot Sabretooth. He's like, oh shit, Victor's going to kill me. Victor, a.k.a. Sabretooth. So Red Skull is basically trying to bail, get in the car, go. They catch him. Uh, they catch him in the submarine. The chick basically went underwater. So he went. He was underwater. One of the chicks who was, I think the alien, went underwater to catch him. Pulled out the guys. Those guys drowned. He had a scuba suit. He was going to basically almost get out. He, she caught him. And then the whole crew's are like, all right, you got caught up. Cool. We got to go. And then Victor's like, you kept him alive? And they were kind of like standing there. And there. There's a little bit of hesitation. Victor went up to him and just slashed his throat. Cut his heads clean off. Killed the Red Skull. Or whatever version of the Red Skull this was. Because they were saying this wasn't actually Red Skull. This was a different version of Red Skull. Or some imposter. And so that's pretty much how this one ends. So this one was pretty good, pretty cool, pretty brutal for Marvel, you know, head cutting off, pretty cool. Uh, and then, yeah, like I said, so that's pretty much how it ends. I was double checking to make sure there wasn't anything else after that. But that was the New Avengers number 12. 
Ba ba ba. All right. And now on the docket. On the docket, like I'm giving a speech. Ah, ah, so hilarious. Yeah, get on with it. Hold on. I need my energy first. I'm covering up the label so I don't get sued or, you know, whatever, because they're not paying me. Oh, that's annoying for audio listeners, I know. Because I'm mostly an audio listener when it comes to podcasts. However, for some reason, I decided to add some video to it. I mean, I'm doing comic review. It kind of makes sense to have a little bit of video instead of just audio. So, we got Justice League. Number 52 here. The new Man of Steel featuring Lex Luthor in a metal armored suit with a light up Superman S on his chest. So basically he's adopting the Superman symbol and it seems like he's going good. Or at least in this issue or this run, he's going good. I'm, I know Lex Luthor has his kind of back and forth on whether or not he's a good guy, bad guy. He has a little bit of that, the Loki element, you know, sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad. Most of the time, though, he's only looking out for himself. Lex only cares about Lex. Now, basically it starts off with him in the lobby of the Daily Planet. Daily Planet, right? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Daily Bugle against Spider-Man. My number one thought. Oh, it's going to be Spidey. Did this dude just try to thwip webs at us? I did. Nerd number one right here. Pat the 1D man. Follow me for Nerd Noon. For more of it. Random. So anyway. Starts up with Lex. Uh, basically in the lobby. Being like shushed arrived from security. Like I know you're not supposed to be here. No way supposed to be here tomorrow. And he's staring at this glass enclosure of Superman's cape. Because apparently Superman is dead. Not sure how he died. Lex is trying to figure that out too because apparently he'd been in Apocalypta, the planet, where basically he could have been the ruler. He talks about it a few times in this issue where he's like, I left a place where I could have been the ruler. I could have reigned. But my sister would not have wanted it. Lena, I think it was, said in the book. I'll flip it in a minute. But she apparently is in some coma. And we know that because Lex visited later on. Sees how she's doing. And basically is hopeful that, you know, she will survive or she'll come through. And he actually ends up buying the Daily Planet so he could own the cape. And then it ends with him donning the cape and adding that to his costume that he already has with the Superman S on it. And basically saying, I hope you'll be proud of me, sister, because I'm going to be Superman when you wake from the coma. And I gotta lie, being a bald dude, seeing Lex Luthor rock a metallic Superman outfit, I got cosplay ideas now. <laughs> That's the one downside. Once I shaved my head, I was like, oh man, I gotta figure out bald superheroes to cosplay as. I know, I could go the mask route, which actually is almost easier now because then it doesn't mess with the hair. But you know, I liked having the hair and doing the, you know, emo Spidey. I did emo uh, Peter Parker, you know, from the Spider-Man 3 series. We was all walking around doing the jazz dance. But I'm starting to flip really quick to find the sister's name. But essentially, uh, it shows Lex actually doing helpful things. So uh, while he was in Apocalypta, he got this mystery box or magic box, essentially. It's a super powerful box weapon that he has that he uh, had to tap into alarm systems so he could figure out what was going on, any crime that was going on and stuff. So he actually goes and stops a couple burglaries and he's starting to try to do good and show that he can do good. So rewind really quick, because again, this is how I randomly explain stuff. 
I didn't explain the part where the Justice League comes into play. Because it is a Justice League book. You're like, well, it's Justice League book. You've just been talking about Lex Luthor in a Superman suit. Essentially, that's mostly what it was. Uh, but after he's at the Day of the Planet, initially, he turns around and Diane's there, Wonder Woman, and all the other uh, superheroes of Justice League, and they're going, you've been gone on Apocalypse for a hot minute. He died. You, we don't even know why. He didn't necessarily say that, but he's like, I don't even know how he died. But then he gets sidetracked because Flash is like, why are you wearing his S? Like you go away and you come back and all of a sudden you're wearing his S on your chest. You think you're Superman now, kind of? He's like, well, this was given to me by the people of Apocalypta. Because, like I said, he kind of tells earlier, later, that he was basically their guardian, their Superman there. Uh, at, on the planet. He could have actually ruled. He says how he could have gone, defeated other worlds, defeated other, other, galax defeated other galaxies. But he did not. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the name. My sister, Lena. I was right. Yeah. I, oh. I mean, I just read it last, so it should have been in there. But I just read three comics in a row, and one of them had a bunch of Greek random names that were a little confusing even to pronounce. But, actually, really, I say this almost every issue, but I enjoyed this one. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I like when the villain tries to go good, when it seems like they got good intentions. It always seems to be for a family member or a loved one. Someone is injured, somebody just died, and it's because of either their villainous ways or something that they did that caused it. And so then they're like, oh, man, I got to turn this page I gotta turn my life around. I gotta become a hero. I gotta use my powers for good. You know. So, those are my three random comics for today, for episode five. But again, like I said, my randomness, I always add a little bit extra towards the end. And this one, I'm more just gonna show off than explain another comic, because I read those three. I was like, oh man, I gotta read another one. And I was like, well, I could just show off this other cool thing that I got. That's kind of a part of history. My history. Because Venom, while I debuted here in Amazing Spider-Man 300, I was first born in these pages. That's right. Right here is the Marvel Age number 12. This is the very first appearance, very first appearance of Spider Man in a black costume. That's cool, right? Now I'm not going to show you the cover. I'll open it up, show you the money shot, and you can all be jealous. Or you can all go online. Oh, is this some ASMR stuff? I know, I joked in one of my past videos, I was like, make sure the comics are open first because people are going to hate this. And then I listened to it and I was like, well, it could be some ASMR stuff. I'm trying to make sure this tape doesn't go on the book when I take the book out. Pulling over. Oh, I know, the drama. Oh, 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 oh. Then I gotta remember what page it's on. So, the story of this is the very first illustration published by Marvel of Spidey in the black costume. Pretty dope. He had red instead of white initially, and that illustration, that concept, was bought by Jim Shooter for Marvel from that art from that artist, from that fan artist, for 220 bucks. Imagine that. What then later becomes Venom, and one of the most iconic characters in Spider-Man's, I mean, just legacy, lexicon, entire universe, everything. You got 220 bucks for it? Man, you're kicking yourself now, ain't you? I mean, that dude has to make comic appearances or something. Like, he's got to sell stuff on whatnot. Or, like, 
that he's got to make some money off that somehow, man. You that man. You the OG. And of course, my collection also is now complete when it comes to Symbiote first appearances. Thanks to BrokeAssComics.com. BrokeAssComics.com. Not a paid advertisement. Just giving them a shout out. Because that is who I got that comic from. And I also got this other giant beast back here, which I didn't know it was a giant beast. So basically, I'm part of this Facebook group, Broke Ass Rejects, Broke Ass Rejects, where it's all about promoting his website, the Broke Ass Comics site, and he puts specials up there, bundles, all that jazz. Sometimes, they do some random giveaways, and he posted that he put something free on his website, all you have to pay is shipping, you just have to find the listing. Well, me being a web coder and a web nerd, I found it in like two seconds. And then I clicked, obviously, add to cart, and I got it. And so this beastly thing came in the mail. I didn't know it was an oversized comic. I thought it was just a regular sized comics at first. But this thing is massive. It's awesome. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. When I do read it, don't worry. I will report back to you guys. And you can enjoy the randomness of the Batman adventure with me. But it's 76 pages. So, I didn't have time for that. I was trying to read some of these random comics. Because we got between 300 to 400 random mystery comics to go through. Has you join me on this adventure of randomness, comics, and fun, and sarcasm, and venom voices. Wow, I kind of like broke out of that Venom voice weird. Venom versus... Animal! Animal! I used to be able to do Animal really good. I just say Venom, it's hard to do. The kids went into Muppets back not too long ago. So I did Carby and uh, Animal. Look at the frog here! See, I can't do it. I just broke my voice with the whole Venom thing. Yes, you can. Let the symbiote take control. That's enough for now. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Rough Draft of Randomness podcast. If you have, I've got two words for you. Wait, wait, wait. Before I do that one, I like doing this ending one. Until next time, like and subscribe. Peace.